This is a video about the new Raspberry Pi 3. It's based on our previous videos, but has had to be rewritten because, to be honest, the new Pi has become a little bit unruly. It was easy to explain what to do with the earlier Pis as they only had a single network connection, but the new Pi 3 is challenging, as it has a standard wired connection and an onboard Wi-Fi. It tries to make so many connections to the internet that life can become a little confusing. So here we will try to unravel exactly what is going on. We saw in a previous video how the Pi booted and presented this GUI, its graphical user interface. As we continue, we will assume that you have a clean Raspbian Linux installation and begin by pressing this icon at the top of the screen to open a text window, into which we are going to enter the commands. What happens from here depends on where you are. You could be on the coach, in school, or at home. Now, when you connected your Pi, this RJ45 plug clicked into this connector, and these lights should have illuminated to confirm that you had a connection. This green light flashed if the Pi was talking on the Ethernet network. The Ethernet network is the first route the Pi can use to access the Internet. The second route the Pi can use is via its Wi-Fi radio connection. This does not need a cable, as it's wireless. If you click on this icon, a drop-down menu appears displaying a list of Wi-Fi stations or access points your Pi can see. Next to the names, there are tiny icons. The ones with a padlock require a password to use. The others are open. For the moment, click on your choice and enter any password if requested. If your connection is successful, the icon changes to this Wi-Fi symbol. Be patient as this connection can take a few seconds to be confirmed. Connecting to an access point is called associating. Now when you move the cursor over the Wi-Fi symbol, a block of data appears. In this example, there are three lines of information. The first starts ETH0 and says configured, followed by some numbers. The next two lines begin with WLAN0 and say associated with and the name of the access point, and then some more numbers. We will come back to this shortly, but note that the details shown on your Pi will be different to the ones shown here. Before we look at these lines any further, let's take a look at where your Pi actually is, physically. If it is on the coach, then the short cable, called a patch lead, connects your Ethernet connector to a socket on the wall. There is wiring inside the coach that connects the sockets to a central hub at the rear. This hub combines all of the signals from each desk so that they can share the orange cable that connects back to your school. The coach also has its own access point. The Pi can detect this and associate using Wi-Fi. All of the Wi-Fi signals on the coach can then be redirected via the orange cable back to your school or diverted to use the mobile phone network. These are the two connection options for data from the coach. In school, you also have the option of connecting your Pi using a cable to the wall socket or using Wi-Fi. This is the same Wi-Fi used by your existing iPads and tablets. Either way, the signal goes back to a central point where it is converted into light pulses to be sent by optical fibre to County Hall in Cardiff Bay. From County Hall, it goes off onto the internet. Public and Caric are the two common visible networks. They come from these access points that are located around the school. How many can you spot? So, cable and wireless are also the connection options from your school. Finally, the same but smaller option may exist at your home. You are likely only to have one Wi-Fi access point, which is probably referred to as your home router or modem. A typical home router looks like this, with one or more Wi-Fi aerials, or antenna, ports labelled LAN, and one labelled WAN. Wired links in your house go to the LAN sockets, and the WAN will be connected to a telephone or cable TV socket that goes off to Virgin, BT or Sky, whoever your internet service provider is. The Wi-Fi connection is very convenient. It's easy to share and quite fast but it's very low power and therefore cannot travel any great distance. How far from your house can you pick up your Wi-Fi signal? Can you see the signals from other houses in your area? Are some without passwords or passwords that are easy to guess? From your home, you also have wired and wireless connections. 
Two terms mentioned in that last section were LAN and WAN. LAN stands for Local Area Network, and WAN for Wide Area Network. A local network is local to you, say a distance of up to 100 metres. All of the machines you connect are on your LAN. Everybody else, WAN, further away outside your system. In simple terms, you could describe the whole of the internet as us and them. All of the machines connected on your local network, the LAN, as being us, and the rest of the world as being them, on the WAN. It depends on where you are. So on the coach, we could say our collection of pies is us, on our LAN, and the rest of the world is the WAN. In school, the school is the LAN, and the rest of the world, the WAN. At home, everything connected to your home router is your LAN, and the rest of the world is them, the WAN. LAN, WAN, us, them. The name for the connection between the LAN and the WAN is a gateway. Any data that we want to send to the internet and any data from the internet has to come through that gateway. The gateway can therefore be a very busy device. Before any device can use the internet, it has to understand two things, addressing and protocols. With letters and parcels, you have a postal address. The postal system can't operate without addresses as nobody would know where to send things. With telephones, you need a telephone number. The phone system cannot operate without numbers. It's the same with the internet. You cannot communicate on the internet without an internet address. Current internet addresses look like four numbers ranging from 0 to 255 separated by three dots. These are examples of internet addresses. Your Pi must have a valid internet address to communicate on the internet. Having an address is only the first half of communicating. It must also know how to speak internet. Talking internet is knowing when to say the right things at the right time. It's called a protocol. Our lives are surrounded by protocol. The right things should be done at the right time. These are images where perhaps the protocol is not being followed. Protocols may sound difficult, but using a pedestrian crossing involves a protocol. It just means understanding and responding to signals in the correct way. Walk, don't walk. Cross using the area marked by the black and white blocks marked on the road. Drivers have a separate protocol involving different coloured lights and even which side of the road to drive on. All of these are protocols. The Pi understands Internet Protocol, IP, and can therefore take part in global electronic communications. Let's see how this is achieved. We saw the gobbledygook streaming up the screen during the Pi's boot process. It was hard to read, and to be perfectly honest, only real geeks can or want to read this stuff. But in amongst the words were the details about how your Pi was trying to communicate on its Ethernet port. You may have seen the lights flashing as it did so. What it was doing was panicking. The Pi is only a small, young device and a very long way from home. It cries out for help down its network port. You can see the results of its appeals by entering the command interface configuration into the terminal window. Rather than type this out in full, we can use the shorter term ifconfig. Shortening terms like this is called concatenation, and we will see several examples of this later. It speeds up typing. Enter ifconfig, all in lowercase, no spaces. Then press the enter key. All of this new gobbledygook is displayed, but we can look through it to work out exactly what has gone on and whether the Pi has received any response to its cry for help. Oh. Expand the window if you have to, to see this full screen. It's easier if we break things down a little. What you can see here are three main blocks of information. The top block is labeled ETH0, the middle one LO, and the final one WLAN0. In each block, you should see an internet address. The Pi has usefully concatenated internet address into INET ADR. In this example, we will see that the top ETH block has an internet address of 192.168.0.35. This means that the Ethernet port has successfully obtained this number as its IP address. 
The next block is LO. Now, LO is a special address. It's the loopback concatenated. Every device on the internet uses 127.0.0.1 to refer to itself. So LO is the block here that refers just to this Pi. Your Pi will also use 127.0.0.1 to refer to itself too. We can ignore this for now. The final block is the wireless LAN, the Wi-Fi, and here WLAN0, the internet address, 192.168.0.36, which has been allocated to the Wi-Fi link. Now this is all a great start. ETH0 and WLAN0 have been allocated IP addresses. As long as you have an internet address in either the ETH0 section or the WLAN0 section, then the first step has been taken. You may have noticed that this screen displays some of the details shown when the mouse was moved over the Wi-Fi icon at the top of the screen. These details are taken from my office setup, but your addresses will differ. If you are in a group, compare the IP addresses you've been allocated. Here is an example taken from the coach during a visit to a local school. All of the IP addresses are the same, except for this column. This is the individual address of each Pi. A similar readout for another school looks like this. A good hacker, or cracker for that matter, looks for patterns. A third school looks like this. So the last number is each Pi, and the next number appears to be related to each school. All schools in Cardiff appear to start with 10,190. The system is organising numbers for us. Compare this with, say, a postcode. Another command that you can try is root space minus n. A screen like this should appear. It shows more IP addresses, in particular one or more in this column labelled gateway. This is the IP address of the gateway that connects our LAN to the WAN. Now the Pi knows where to send internet data. This should give us a lot of confidence that everything is working before we move to the next stage. We can now perform our first test. How do we detect other users on the LAN? It was during the Second World War that engineers invented ASDIC, a method for warships to detect submarines lurking away under the sea. They sent out a pulse of sound that would be reflected if there was a submarine present. As you can hear, the sound pulse used sounds like a ping, and it's ping that we will use on the internet to detect another user. Try entering the command ping, followed by a space, and then enter the IP address of someone in your group, or any of the IP addresses shown in the gateway column. You should see this. A game or gobbledygook that streams up the screen. To stop the output, hold down the control key on the keyboard, labelled control, and then tap the letter C once. What you have seen on the screen is the result of pings sent out by your Pi. It says that 64 bytes of information have been sent out from your address in this column. They have all been counted out and counted back in sequence, and the time recorded to achieve this is shown in this column. Question. How many milliseconds are there in a second? Hint. There are a thousand millimetres in a metre. So, there are a thousand milliseconds in a second. If you are in a group, ping one another and compare your results. Ping is the most basic command to check whether you have connection to another machine. If pings get lost, the connection is likely to be unreliable. It's not unusual for the times to vary, and for the first time recorded to be much longer than the rest. One final test you can perform is a ping to a name rather than an IP address. The technical term for cardiff.gov.uk and bbc.co.uk is a domain name. Ping a domain name. Try ping www.cardiff.gov.uk or ping www.bbc.co.uk to see what comes back. Try this test from home and school, as the results will be different. Remember, a consistently low time is good. Important point one. Ping probably does not work fully at school. Try it at home and see how different and powerful it is. 
Pi did not really panic when it was booted, but it did call out for help across the network. It calmly requested some details so that it knew where it was, what LAN it was on, and how to get onto the internet using the IP address of the gateway. The process it used is called the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which shortened becomes the acronym DHCP. This call has a response that contains four important numbers, all in the form of IP addresses. Four numbers, three dots. To help me when I recall these numbers, I remember my old mate Sid with two Ds. <laughs> the S in Sid stands for subnet mask, as you can see here in the printout from ifconfig, where it's just called mask. The masks here are all 255-255-2550, and most masks look roughly the same. They are the way the Pi works out what is on the LAN and what is on the WAN. There is another video that shows how this is done, but it's really not important at this stage. I stands for internet address. This is important. The four numbers separated by three dots. The first D is for default gateway. It's the IP address of the gateway machine that connects the LAN to the WAN. The final D comes from, and I promise you this is the last acronym for this video, the DNS, or Domain Name System. The domain name system converts domain names like www.cardiff.gov.uk and www.bbc.co.uk to IP addresses. We saw it in operation when we typed ping www.cardiff.gov.uk. Before the Pi could carry out the ping, it had to call out to the DNS to convert the name into an IP address. The good news is that if your Pi was allocated an IP address, and if your Pi was sent an address of a default gateway, and if you could convert a name to an IP address, then it's highly likely that it will operate correctly on the internet. Off you go.